Dr. Jacobs was really fond of my running background and he every week he would come over and show me his running log and he'd say, I ran three miles yesterday and I've got, I'm going to have 25 miles for the whole week. So that kind of stuck with me. So when he passed away, I thought, you know, maybe I'll start a race in his memory. But I really had no idea it would take off. Just a great day and a thank you day, a memory of Dr. J. And so many people have thanked uh, us because th there was a lot of sadness, especially from the patients, and they were able to put it this into a positive force. Let's have everybody turn around and say Happy Father's Day! Happy It brings all our families together, and it has for 10 years and it's been with smiles and, and great you know, joy, as he was a joyful person. We started out together. He was a neurologist, I was a neurosurgeon. He was um, trained as a vascular neurologist and quite by serendipity working with some scientists at the Roswell Park. He came upon the idea of beta interferon for multiple sclerosis. One thing that characterized Larry was incredible determination. If he had an idea, forget about it, he would get it done. So he pursued it, and he pursued an NIH grant, and against all odds, Larry got the grant and proved that beta interferon worked. The drug that Larry invented, beta interferon, is still today the treatment of choice for relapsing multiple sclerosis. So literally millions of people around the world are benefiting from Larry's discovery. Dr. Jacobs hired a famous photographer to do photos of like 24 of his patients. People who have like a chronic disease who are disabled felt really special and he just was that kind of a guy like who would think of that? He was an artist, he was a singer. He would sing down the hall singing songs to me as he went by. But more important, he'd just come in and help me examine patients to make sure I was doing it correctly. Good. And over here. Medicine to him was such a pleasure uh, that he made working with him and working in that department just what you picture medicine should be. Push me down. Spread it. And he was really funny. And, and, and a great, great person. I still looking on, um, I have still following patients that uh, he saw and looking over his nods. I'm all the time smiling. Give it all you got. Ready? Good. And he was a great man and we grew together and learned a lot. He was my hero, my friend, my mentor. He was really great. After Dr. Jacobs died, we were a little bit lost. Look at my other ear. So it's more difficult to get grants. So when the job for the Jake came up, primarily to raise money for initial small studies that further on can bring larger grants. The job for the Jake, by, by the end of the 10 years here, have, have basically raised about a million dollars for the Jacobs Neurologic Institute. 100% of that has all gone into research. <laughs> there you go, got that one. So they're the kinds of funds that uh, allow us to recruit faculty, uh, that also help entice faculty who want to get into research uh, and retain faculty who are here who can take advantage of these kinds of funds to test new ideas. That's okay. That's okay. If you can't do it, you can't do it. Columbia University just closed their MS clinic. It just was not able to, to survive on its own. The fact is, is that most MS clinics 
cannot make a profit and perform service for the patients. So we rely heavily on, on philanthropic funds to keep clinics of, of expertise like this going on. Larry always had a dream to see medicine in Buffalo become world class in every respect. And they send wires forward and make the eyes oscillate wrong. And I guess what we're trying to do now is to help to fulfill his dream. Oh, good job, good job, okay. So we are um, keeping his legacy and we hope that um, he's proud of what we did during all this period of time. His work lives on today in the cutting edge research we're doing in multiple sclerosis. It lives on today in Bianca Weinstock Gutman uh, and her leadership of that clinic. And it lives on today in terms of our patients. He's still with me. He's still working through me. I'm still at the MS Center, still taking care of the patients that we took care of 20 years ago. So his spirit lives on. And I'm thankful for that. He was a very humble guy. So I just knew him as kind of like my funny, goofy dad. And then the, at the first race, it was all these patients came up and were so grateful and told us all these stories I'd never heard about my dad before. I think he would love to know that, like how appreciated he was, but also that his kids are learning about what he was doing all this time, like why he was working so hard and, and that it's had such a big impact on people. He just had a charisma, always. But he was just a normal guy that had a dream, really, and he just kept dreaming that dream. We're also lucky to have known him and have the spirit of him that continues. That's really true. We really feel it, so that'll be forever. the pacemaker circuit. <laughs> and I hope that we'll just continue this energy, and I know we will.